In this video we're going to talk about water and water pollution. And first we're going to define another term that you need to be able to define is watershed. And a watershed is a region draining into a larger body of water. And so here I've drawn out these little blue streams going into a river that finally floats into a lake, you know. So this would be defining all the watershed for this lake. And on some of the streams I have a farm and I have a factory and then over here I have a house, okay. And here I say pollution can enter anywhere in the body of the wa water's watershed. So it could come from the house, the farm, or the factory and eventually get down through the lake. And so first let's talk about the farm here. Humans use fertilizers on their crops that provide nutrients needed to allow crops to grow. And the farm above may spray phosphate fertilizers. And here I've shown ammonium phosphate. And some of that phosphates you know, may run off from the farm and go into the stream, they go to the river, and go to the lake. And um, that may cause an, what's called an algae bloom. And here I've shown a, a pond here with some green algae growing on top of it. And this blocks the sunlight. And so it could, uh, and when the algae dies, it dec decays and depletes the oxygen from the lake. So that was not an intent probably from the farmer. He just wanted to grow his crops, but the, the net effect was is that later on down the stream the lake basically starts to die. And let's see, uh, on that same farm the farmer may spray pesticides and these pesticides eventually make it to the lake killing fish and other living species. So a pesticide is a chemical that you spray to kill uh, usually insects of some sort and uh, uh, eventually those will uh, another side effect is he was just wanting to raise his crops but it eventually killed the fish down in the lake and again if we look at the factory that I drew right here um, the factory may introduce pollutants into the watershed from waste generated from manufacture of goods and these can include uh, heavy metals uh, in the past uh, polychlorinated biphenyls but they were banned in 1968, which and they're very toxic. And they can also introduce uh, thermal pollution by heating the water. So if they have some furnace or they're cooling some parts that they're making, uh, that could they could be introducing uh, thermal uh, pollution into the uh, watershed. And then lastly, here I have a house near a stream that goes down to the river and the lake and uh, what you put down the drain goes to the watershed and so detergents and soaps and any waste products you put down the garbage disposal or just pour down the drain and pharmaceuticals now are a problem they have been detected in the watershed because people take a lot of drugs uh, medicinal drugs and then it enters through when you go to the bathroom and so what can I do about water pollution and conservation? What can you do, okay? And you could fix leaks, prevent evaporation, use farming and gardening fertilizers that need less, that need less use uh, often and are more environmentally friendly, use low flow showers and toilets. That's the, the low flow showers is something that I've done in my house. Uh, when I first moved in there there was very high flow showers and it would drain the water heater <laughs> almost instantly but then putting in a low flow system three people could, three or four people could take a shower without draining the water heater um, be careful of what you put down the drain just don't pour anything oils or uh, of that thing and so um, here's something straight out of the merit badge pamphlet it says currently uh, forty percent of the world's population lives with serious water shortages. And that's pretty significant when you think about it. Forty percent of the population is around three billion people are living currently with water shortage issues. 
And here I put in prevent ap evaporation as one of the things that you can do to prevent, uh, to conserve water. And so uh, I found this on the internet, Project Nexus, a small scale installation of solar panels over water canals of the Turlock Irrigation District that's in California. So California has approximately 4,000 miles of public water delivery infrastructure. And so the plan was to put solar cells over these to prevent evaporation while at the same time um, generating electricity that's clean. So if fully installed over uh, California, because right now it's just a uh, project, sort of proof of concept testing it. If fully installed over California, this would result in a saving of 63 billion gallons of water annually, while at the same time uh, generating 13 gigawatts of electricity annually. And you can read more about it down here at this website.